I don't. Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. It is a Friday evening and I am just wiped out. I've been wiped out all day. I tried so hard to think of something to do for you guys and I just could not think of anything. One thing I would have liked to have done is the video for the sorbet that I made. I made a sorbet last night, but I didn't record because I just was too involved in the sorbet making. Um, it came out so good. The only thing is I used the mixed fruit that I bought that had mango in it. And mango is an odd fruit. It kind of tastes like cod liver oil to me. So it ruined the flavor of the sorbet, but it was very easy to make. So the one that I'll be making for you guys on camera will be strawberry banana. And I'm hoping I can do that this weekend. And I am so anxious to try all kinds of different combinations to make with Skyla. And what's awesome is you can make just a serving at a time if you want. And you don't need a food processor. You could use a blender. I think a food processor would probably work a little bit better. But you can use a blender if you want. Maybe I'll try it in a blender so we can see how that works. Did I say blender? Blender. E-R. You know, it's funny. The French Canadians, words that end with A will be pronounced like E-R, like tuna. My mother calls it tuna. And any girl's name that ends with an A, like Linda or Brenda, my mother says Linda, Brenda. But a word that ends with E-R is pronounced like A. For instance, Roger's super dollar. Super is E-R and dollar is, well, A-R, but everybody pronounces them just like super and dollar. I'm completely off the subject. Why am I not comfortable? Is it because it's hot? <sighs> I wonder how long I could do that for. Probably for an hour. <laughs> I have a lamp on and I don't like the light. I'm so a lover of darkness. I'm a dark girl. Somebody up the hill is just running a vehicle just for the heck of it. Boom, boom, boom. And I don't like that. So what can we talk about? I'm going to have to have a Q&A with you guys again so you can ask me a bunch of questions and it'll give me something to do when I yawning, warning. <gasps> So it can give me something to do when I don't have anything to do. Because there's so many times I'm, I'll be like, oh, next time I'll talk about this or I'll talk about that or I'll... But then, you know, I just have to be in the mood. And I'm trying to think, what kind of things have you guys asked me to talk about? Maybe I can talk about something. Okay, since my husband is on my mind... Because he's still not working, I don't think he'll ever work again. He left his job on January 31st, and he's an alcoholic, and he's very sick. His lungs are bad, and there's just no way he'll ever be working again. So I have to uh, kindly call him. He lives in Houston. I'm in Maine. I have to call him and let him know that he won't be able to have access to my credit card anymore <laughs> because I've been supporting him for the past three months and I am going to have to cut back on that. So I have to work out an arrangement with him. But anyway, a lot of you guys have asked me to talk about him, like how we met and whatever. And, and some of you think that he is Derek's father and he's not. I never married Derek's father. So... Let me just try to tell you the short version of this. 1975, I was 14, and I went to Houston with my mother and my grandmother. And we were staying there for an entire month with one of my brothers. At the time, all three of my brothers were living in Houston. One of my brothers set me up with a guy who worked for him and asked him if he would take me out, show me around. And that guy's name was Steve, and Steve took me out and 
I remember we went to see The Exorcist, and I had already seen it. And that movie scared the living daylights out of me back then. Now I can watch it, and it's almost like a comedy to me. It's just so silly. But anyway, um, back then it scared me. And so I remember he took me to see The Exorcist, and then he asked me if I'd like to go to a concert to see the Guess Who. And I loved the Guess Who, so I said yes. So he said he was going to be going with some friends and he asked my brother if that was okay if he took me to the concert so my brother said yes and um the time comes for the concert and he picks me up now of course i was 14 so if you've watched my drinking video you know i was quite the drinker by the age of 14. And so we were going to the concert and we w we met his friends at a store, I don't know if it was a liquor store, I don't remember what they, you know, what store it was at, but it was to buy booze. We pulled up next to a car of his friends, and Steve got out of the car I was in with him, and when he got out and walked off, the other car had a driver who also got out, so the only person left in that car was Andy, who's my husband now. And uh, we just kind of like looked at each other, and I was instantly smitten I mean I just could not believe how cute he was it was the 70s and his hair was a little bit long and he just was so cute he started chatting with me a little bit and then he was making fun of my accent and I was just like oh my god I mean I just I just felt like in love that moment we went to the concert and he was showing me Andy was showing me that he had a new watch that had just come out. It was a digital watch, and I had never seen a digital watch. It was the first time ever, and it was just so unusual to me to see a watch that didn't have hands, but just showed the numbers. So when we went to the concert, I remember when we were trying to get into the seats, I made sure that I was going to be sitting next to Andy. I mean, I knew I had to be sitting next to my date too, So, but I wanted to be next to Andy, so it ended up that I was sitting with Andy then me, and then my date, Steve. During that concert, I kept saying, can I see your watch? Can I see your watch? And he would give me, you know, his his hand to look at his watch, and I would be, like, trying to, like, hold his hand. So silly. Um, of course, we got drunk, and my date got wasted and sick. And so Andy said, Steve, just leave your car and you guys come with me. So we went with Andy and his friend to Andy's house and got his car. And I actually got to go in his house, meet his parents, I'm quite sure. And then we all just got into Andy's car and we went out on the town. And we went into this building that had an outside elevator, clear glass, and while we were in that elevator, I was holding hands with Andy while my date had his arm around my back. <laughs> so I think Andy kind of got the message that, that I liked him. So we went in that elevator. We had fun going up and down the elevator. I just was in my glory. I mean, I was 14. I was out in the city of Houston. We ended up going out to another bar or something and got drinks and I remember I was drinking hurricanes I could really drink in those days my date at some point I remember him getting sick outside and I don't know if we continued the night or if he got sick after that restaurant but I do remember sitting with my date at that restaurant drinking my hurricane and playing footsie with Andy who was across the table somehow we ended up getting rid of my date <laughs> And Andy, it, when I think of how dangerous that was, I was 14 years old in the city. Oh, and Andy was 18. I should throw that in there. Um, I was in the city with a complete stranger. He was so nice to me and respectful, and he took care of me. And it was just like the most exciting night I'd ever had. Well, I was only 14, so I probably shouldn't have had too many exciting nights up to that point. But we just rode around the city, and he showed me all kinds of things, and he was just so cute. And I was going to be there for, uh, you know, a few more weeks, and 
I just fell in love with him that night, and he was just the nicest guy, and I remember we were stopped at a red light. When I lived there, years later, he would always say, this is the red light that we stopped at. We stopped at a red light, and we probably let it go red-green, red-green, like ten times while we were just making out in the car, and people would go by, and it was just, you know, that's, that's as much as we did with Kiss, and I just, I just fell in love, and I saw him a couple more times, um... But I had to be sneaky because my brother was so mad because he brought me home at four in the morning. And so my brother wasn't too happy about that. But my sister-in-law during the day would let me go off and see Andy. So Andy would come and pick me up and he would take me out. And of course we talked about how we'd be together one day and we exchanged addresses. And you know, there were no cell phones in those days. So we couldn't keep in touch that way. And I came, when I came back to Maine, he and I, I, I know we wrote to each other maybe a couple of times. We might have talked on the phone a couple of times. And then that fall, I met Rob, who is my son's father. So I had turned 15, and I met Rob, and we were together for like a year and a half, and I got pregnant, and then we split up, and that's another whole story. And when I was pregnant... I honestly think Andy was the first person I told. We hadn't talked in a while, and I wanted to tell somebody, and I called him just to tell him I was pregnant, to say hi, and I found out that he was married, and they'd just had a baby. And I just felt so sad that I'd lost my Andy. And so I went on my merry way, had my baby, and when Derek was about six months old, I went back to Houston with a friend while I was there. So now I was, this was in, uh, I was 17 now. And so I hadn't seen Andy for three years. He was married. He had a son and I had a son. And his son is like almost a year older than my son. While I was there, I looked up and contacted the guy, Steve, who I went out on the date with. And I told him, I said, you remember me? He's like, yes, yes. And I said, are you still friends with Andy? And he's like, yes. And I was like, I'd love to see him. And he said, we can do that. He says, like, you know, I'll, I'll make plans to see Andy if you want. And I'll pick you up and you'll be my date. And he knew that I liked Andy and he was cool with that. But, you know, just it would not make sense for me to want to go see Andy. So as a couple, as a date, we could go and his wife, Andy's wife, wouldn't have to know that I was in love with Andy. And and, and because at this point, um, Derek's father and I were not together. So I just really wanted to see Andy. So Steve fixed it up and we went to Andy's and just watched TV and played some games with like some dice game or something. And with his with Andy and his wife and she was very very nice and Andy still looked absolutely adorable and I was like oh my god and somewhere I have a diary where I wrote how I felt when I saw him and um, I wonder if I could find that I probably could well I'll save that for another time now let me go look hang on oh my god you guys I found the diary that I wrote and I found this picture. Now this was Andy probably maybe five or six years after I met him. I believe in this picture he already had two children. He ended up marrying the mother of his kids and they had three children together and but then they divorced. But this was him when he was like maybe very early 20s and he still had his shaggy hair but it wasn't long like when I met him and I just, and he had a little mustache. I wish I had a picture of him of, how come I have a glare of when I met him when he was 18. This is a picture of Andy with his grandkids. I'm just going to cover their faces. Um, when, this is probably like five or six years ago. I'm going to say so, like maybe, I don't know, maybe when he was like, maybe 54, 55. I'm having a hard time to show you this. But this is what I called my diary. It's just a little pad of paper that I had brought with me that year to Texas so I could have addresses of, of oh, I have Andy's address, an old, old phone number. Oh, my God. Names of friends to write to, people I haven't seen in years. Um, wow. I had a lot to say. This was um, 1978, and it was the disco era. And I was a disco queen. 
But let's see here. Ooh, I danced disco again. <laughs> Had fun, but was dancing terrible, I think. <laughs> you remember, I was 17. Joe was kind of cute. That must have been a guy I met at the bar or something. Oh, you could get into bars very easy. I was in bars at 14, both in Texas and here in Maine. Who we went to a club called The Place. I had a white Russian and one zombie. Let's see here. I found Andy's phone number today after a whole day of searching and talked to his wife. He's still married, but she seems very nice. I said I'd call back about 6.15 when he got out of work, but I didn't. I want to call him tomorrow. August 24. Oh, let me see here. August 24, and this is 1978. Talked to Andy today, and he was so nice. <laughs> he asked if I still had the necklace he gave me. And I said yes. That first night that I met him, he went in to buy beer or something. He came out with a necklace with a pot leaf. <laughs> I still have it upstairs. It's a, just a pot leaf. I, I wasn't even into smoking pot at that time. I was My pot years were over by the time I was 14, but he bought me a pot leaf necklace. His brother had twin girls on the 11th, asked me to go over his house tomorrow, and I said I'd call him back to find out. I want to get his address to write to him forever. I don't even know what I was trying to say there. August 25, I saw Andy, exclamation points, big round ones, three of them. After I woke up at 5 o'clock p.m., <laughs> I called Steve. I called Steve Reynolds, that was Andy's friend, to see if he could take me to see Andy. I was tired, so... Oh, my friend was tired. I had gone with a friend, so she didn't want to go. Steve called back and said yes. On our way to Andy's, we stopped to change someone's tire. We finally got to Andy's after a long search for the apartment. Then we found it. His wife answered the door and we went in and when we entered the living room I saw Andy. Beautiful Andy. <laughs> His hair was long. I really love him. Why does he have to be married? My handwriting was terrible. He let me see his son, Louis. He woke up and cried. We listened to the stereo. <laughs> we played a game called Farkle. That was a dice game. And we even looked at home movies of his brother's stag party. Oh, I don't remember that. His brother, Jay. Andy's wife is not anything great, but she is real nice and lucky to have Andy. I smoked two of Andy's cigarettes, Marlboro Lights. <laughs> I kept the filter of the second one. I have no, no clue what that is. This, is. this is funny. I really can't write down all I feel. I want to get his address so bad, but I know it's impossible. How come that was impossible? Oh, I want to get his address so bad, but I know it's impossible to know him forever. Every time he'd move, he'd have to get in touch with me, and as if he'd want to do that. <laughs> I still want to see him again. When we left, he came out to sh show Steve how to get back to the car, and I said, See you later, Andy. I couldn't say goodbye. Oh, he said a sentence to me, but I didn't understand it. I said, what? And he just looked and said, bye. I wonder what he said. Oh, I was wearing my... <laughs> I was wearing my tan high-waisted pants, white and red shirt, halter, um, my three rings heart necklace, and my gold flower earrings with white centers. 
I remember the first time I met him, I was wearing high-waisted jeans and an aqua short shirt. He brought up the concert. Old memories came back. I loved him so much. And that will never stop. He said he still has his digital watch, but it's broken. I curled my hair tonight. In parentheses, I wrote for him. <laughs> but the girls didn't stay. I wonder how he thought I looked. I wonder if it's possible he still feels the same towards me. I doubt it because it's crazy. <laughs> I don't know why I feel this way. It's probably because I was young and fell for him and fell for his attention, but I still feel the same. It was love at first sight and an everlasting one at that. I love you, Andy, even though it's wrong. <laughs> okay, so um, that was interesting. Makes me not want to cut him off the credit card. <laughs> Oh, my eyes are watering, but I'm not crying. It's just because I've been yawning. So, okay. So you must be wondering, how come we're married? He, um... Man, I didn't think I was even recording. He divorced. They were married for a while. He divorced. I saw him a couple other times when I went to Houston. Uh, I think I saw him once again after he was married, but they were splitting up. And then they divorced, but he married someone else. And I know we talked a few times while he was married to his second wife. And then I know I saw him another time. I can't remember if he was married to wife number two, but he had picked up me and another friend and brought us to a club, but he didn't want to go in the club. And then when he dropped us off, he decided he did want to go to the club, and he said he saw me inside the club, and he saw me talking to one of the guys, so he didn't bother to come in. And But we kept in touch for a, a while by phone, and, you know, it wasn't easy then. It was long distance. You had to pay. And, and um, so I would say from, like, my like age 25 to 30, we would talk off and on, and then... At some point there, we went probably maybe like almost 10 years that we didn't talk at all. One night, I came home, and this was in um, was October of 1998, and I saw that Andy had called, and I called him back, and we talked for hours. I mean, literally hours. And I knew by the end of that phone call that we would end up being together. So I was 38, he was 42, and we talked for, no, um, it was like mid-October, November, December. For two months, we talked almost constantly. And I remember that's when different phone companies, the long distance, you could come out with a plan where you paid like $25 a month and you had unlimited long distance like after 9 p.m. and on weekends. And we would just be on the phone for hours at a time. I mean, we would watch movies together on the phone. We, that January of 1999, I had an advertising business, and I just one night just said, I'm quitting my business and I'm moving to be with Andy. And, and I did. I just upped and moved. My son was in college. I kept the apartment, so he had a place to um, come back to. That I went for like a couple of months. He flew back with me when I came back to Maine and we unloaded my apartment and just drove, filled up a U-Haul and drove to Houston. And I was there for three years with him. And that is when he was, we were both drinking so much. And for the first year that we were there together is when I ended up quitting drinking. And he sort of, kind of, quit at one point. When I say sort of, kind of, it's like he didn't drink with me, but if he went out to get something at the store or whatever, I know he had a beer or whatever, but it wasn't like he was drinking. So he was doing good. And then after three years, 
I was always coming back and forth to Maine because I had to uh, still help my parents. And then my dad was sick, though. He had cancer, and so we knew he wasn't going to last too long. So I begged Andy, please, 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 let's move to Maine. And so for Christmas, we drove back. That was Christmas of 2001. We drove back to Maine and moved into an apartment here. I had my father for two years until he died, and then we moved into my family house, and Andy was here for 10 years, and at this point, his drinking was just bad, and it was just, it was just not going good, so he moved back to Houston, and all right, my battery died, but I was just saying that Andy did move back to Houston five years ago, almost, it'll be five years this summer, and we talk often, he's still drinking, I'm still not, and we have talked about him coming back. When he left his job, I said, you know, if you want to come back, you can come back and live with me, but you have to quit drinking and smoking. I will not have him drinking and smoking here, because it just, I don't need to watch that, I just don't. And I don't think he will ever take me up on that offer, unless maybe if he's absolutely desperate, he might think, oh, I'll come back and she'll let me drink. But <laughs> how will he? He won't have the money. <laughs> so when I think of him, I still see that beautiful Andy. We always joke about that because I had read that to him and said, I called you beautiful Andy. When I think of him, I still see that cute boy that I met when I was 14. Never did I, in my wildest dreams, ever think that 25 years after I met him, I would marry him. But we did. We got married. When we got married, and I was 42 when I got married, he, that was when he was doing really good with not drinking. And, you know, it was we had like three years that, that were very good. It was I was here in Maine with him, and... We had my dad, and I just, you know, I was glad to be home and sober. I couldn't believe I was sober and taking care of my father. And, you know, but then it just started to go downhill after that. And he wasn't happy here in Maine at all. I was miserable in Houston, and, you know, so I knew how he felt. He started having grandchildren, and I, knew, I wanted him to be with his grandkids. And um, so... Yeah, he has three children, and he has one, two, three, four, five grandchildren, and I have just my one son, Derek, and I have one granddaughter, Skylar, and her brother, Jared, who I consider to be like a grandson, because I'm every time I go there, I'm with him, too, so he calls me Meme and everything. But anyway, that's the story of my beautiful Andy, and I uh, now I have to call him and tell him I'm going to send him some money. <laughs> But he was nice to me, and I I just, I love him. I just do. Whether or not he's an alcoholic and or what. I mean, it would be wonderful if we could have had it different, but we don't have it different. It's what, you know, we have what we have, and I just, um, he's a good guy. He just doesn't realize it. And that is it. So it's going to be time for the amazing race. So I've got to go. But this was this was fun. It was nice to reminisce about my beautiful Andy. So I hope you enjoyed. And thank you so much. I will be back with more soon. I love you guys. Bye.